Some say CS6 was the last best version of Photoshop, if only because it was the last version that you could purchase outright without paying into the Creative Cloud every single month. So it's easy to look back on CS6 more than 12 years ago now with rose-colored glasses. Couldn't have possibly been that great, right? No, no, here's the thing. It actually was. I'll be talking about CS6 in the present tense because after all, it subscribes to the novel idea that you don't have to subscribe to the Creative Cloud at any rate. Now, I think you'd recognize it right away because this is the first version of Photoshop that adheres to the dark interface. Light text and bright icons against the dark background. You can change that if you like. Notice that the dialog boxes haven't quite made the change, so they're still quite annoyingly bright in my opinion but you can switch to a darker interface if you want to, or lighter. Notice if I press Shift F2, I will make the interface incrementally brighter, or Shift F1 will make it incrementally darker. Those are keyboard shortcuts that were created for development purposes that they just never turned off. Go figure. Anyway, file handling, here's some more new stuff. You can save in the background, I'll show you that in just a moment, and it's going to save recovery information every so often. And I'm going to change this to five minutes, by the way, so I never lose more than five minutes of work. And in, in, in the event that Photoshop crashes, I'll get a recovery file as soon as I relaunch the program. All right, so I'll say OK. And I want to show you that I have a very large file right here. It's based on a pencil drawing that I made using conventional pencil and paper years and years ago. And it's got tons of detail. Check this out. I'll just go ahead and zoom in on this poor guy right here. And you can see that we do have a lot going on. And that is a function of the high resolution scan that I made of this image. And as a result, it's very large. Notice it's 1.79 gigs in RAM, including all of its layers. But let's say I decide to make a change. I'll turn on a different drawing layer right here. And you know what? I'll bring up the navigator panel so I can scoot over to these guys who are a couple of sheep having a conversation. I could zoom out as well if I like. But in any event, notice I have unsafe changes as indicated by this asterisk outside of the parentheses up here in the title tab. And so to update things, I would just go to the file menu and choose the save command and notice that it gives me a percentage. So right now it's 0% done. It's making some progress. I could switch to a different file. I could go ahead and draw a selection outline. It's still saving away. I could turn a layer off and then back on. And it ultimately finishes the save process without inconveniencing me at all. All right, now let's take a look at Photoshop CS6's new and improved crop tool. It's this guy right here. It looks the same as ever, and you get to it just by pressing the C key, but it really is something different. Notice, as I drag the crop boundary, I am seeing a preview of what the image looks like in the background. And so I always know exactly what I'm getting rid of, and that goes for if I rotate by dragging outside the crop boundary as well. You can see that I'm rotating the image and not the boundary so I have a better idea for how things are going to look. I can switch from unconstrained to 60 by 9, let's say, so a different aspect ratio if I like. Here's the important thing. Notice this new checkbox, delete crop pixels. Turn it off. Why don't you? That way you'll get a new layer here inside the layers panel and you won't get rid of a single pixel, even when you press the enter key or click on this check mark up here in the options bar. And so notice if I zoom in and I switch to the move tool, I can drag the image around. Nothing has been permanently cropped away. Okay, here's another way to work. I'll go up to the file menu and choose the revert command just to reinstate the original version of the image. And I will press the C key for the crop tool. And you can just drag if you want to, like in the old days, to create a new crop boundary like so. And now notice up here in the options bar that we have yet another new function, the straighten tool. And you can either select it and drag if you like, or you can get to it on the fly by pressing the control key or the command key on the Mac. And notice, just drag along the horizon line and you straighten the image automatically. And then I'll just go ahead and hone in on this guy a little bit, maybe drag him over a little bit. Although that I could do after the fact, even if he's way up here, I could accept that crop like so, and then press the V key to switch back to the black arrow tool. That is the move tool and drag him around to wherever I like. Now, even though Photoshop CS6 does not require you to subscribe, I kind of do. And 
and it's free after all. It's a public service, don't you know, to me. But it does also provide you with information about, you know, what I'll be doing in the future. For example, right now, I'm going to be showing you a bona fide new tool inside CS6. It goes by the name of Content Aware Move. And what it allows you to do is drag a selection. I drew this one fairly roughly with the lasso tool. And then Photoshop is not only going to move the selected region, but it's going to fill in the old stuff using Content Aware Fill. Now, it's not necessarily going to be perfect. We've got this bad edge right here, and the feet are quite messed up, in which case you can change this adaptation option after the fact. So if you've got a very loose selection, then you can change adaptation to very loose. This would be analogous to lowering the structure value, by the way, in the more recent versions of Photoshop. That doesn't look good, though. We, we, we've got more uh, grass in, in, encroaching on her head, and then we're losing her feet entirely. So in that case, you can just change it to very strict. So if you have a tight selection, this would be analogous to raising the structure value. Incidentally, then we're going to get a better effect. If you want a better effect still, then try undoing that modification. Switch back to the lasso tool and add. So I'm just shift dragging around here and there, sort of in front of her a little bit, above her hands and her head, and then shift drag down below. So I'm just increasing the size of the selection. That can help. And then I'll switch back to that content aware move tool. And I'll go ahead and drag her up to a different location. And it's going to happen immediately. Nowadays, you have the option of transforming things before you apply them, but this actually looks quite good. Now, you have another option where this tool is concerned. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and select these guys that I drew actually inside of a totally different software inside Affinity Photo on the iPad for what it's worth, but I can still open it here inside CS6. And so I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move him over using the Content Aware Move tool. But notice that we have this option Extend right here. So you can change it from Move to Extend. And then you could just drag this over like so. And let's see what it comes up with. We're just going to watch Photoshop work, work its magic right here. It might take a moment for uh, the program to analyze the image on the fly. But a moment later, we're going to see a very interesting effect. Notice that it's quite different than it was before. This is before and this is after, and I'm just doing that by pressing Control-Z, Command-Z on the Mac repeatedly. So that's just a toggle here in CS6. I love that, incidentally. But anyway, notice that it brought over the eye and a bunch of other details as well. And we have something resembling a seamless transition. Now, as you may know, every new version of Photoshop includes a new version of Camera Raw. And CS6 is no exception. So here I have this raw photo that I captured at Pont de Garde in southern France. Now, I want to develop it. And I did so in Photoshop CS5 just so that we have something to compare it to. This is Camera Raw 6. So CS5 had Camera Raw 6. CS6 has Camera Raw 7. Now, things look a lot better thanks to Camera Raw 6 once again. However, if I zoom in, you can see we've got some very rough edges and a lot of noise as well. Compare that to what I was able to achieve using the much improved Camera Raw 7 right here. And if you want to see the settings, I'll just go ahead and double click on this smart object. And there they are. But wait, wait, wait. Looking back on it, I can't believe how much I just want to geek out over Camera Raw 7. There's an argument that ACR7 is not just the apex of Photoshop, but of everything that was right about Adobe. Simple, streamlined interface meets unbridled, dare I say, raw power. Want to see it for yourself? Then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. All right, now let's see how you can apply layer effects to multiple layers at a time. And so notice this folder right here, support text. It's a group 
of tech slayers, as you can see. So it's everything but the Indiana Jones text, including this text up here at the top. So I just want you to see it once again. There it's not, and there it is. Now, I want to apply a drop shadow and a stroke to all of these layers in CS5 and earlier. I would have to hit each layer independently. Now I can apply layer effects to a group, which saves so much time. So I'll click FX, choose drop shadow. I'm going to crank the opacity up to 100%. I'll take the spread up to 100% as well. So with that, we have a nice sharp drop shadow up here at the top as well. And then I'll take the size down to a mere two pixels. Then I'll click on stroke because we want some outlines and I'll take that size value down to two pixels like so. And I'll click OK. And we've affected multiple layers at a time. Now let's say you don't really want all of these layers to be affected. This movie poster text down here at the bottom, it, it, a drop shadow and, and a stroke are just too much. So all I have to do is grab that layer, it's right here, and just drag it out of the group and you can see that it's no longer affected. All right, now let's take a look at another new feature in Photoshop CS6, which is the Blur Gallery. And so notice that here inside the Layers panel that I have the Hummingbird separated to its own layer and the tree layers active. And so I'll now go up to the Filter menu, choose Blur, and choose Feel Blur to bring up the Blur Gallery, which takes up the entire screen. Now this point right here is the center of the Blur effect. We'll come to that in a second. Notice if I increase the blur value, not surprisingly, the scene gets blurrier. And if I were to take it down back to its default, which is 15 pixels, then I would have a more sort of credible effect, I think. But now let's say that I want the tree to be less out of focus. Then I would set a pin just by clicking and I would take this value down and I'll just go ahead and take it down to five pixels, let's say. And I could do that over here as well. And so I'll set a pin and I'll go ahead and take it down to five pixels so that we have just a little bit of blur depth of field in order to offset that hummingbird, at which point I'll click OK. All right, now let's say you decide to apply field blur inside of a selection. Then I'll go ahead and switch to this image right here. And if I switch to the channels panel, you can see that I have an alpha channel called gradient. To load it as a selection, just go ahead and control or command click on that thumbnail like so. And then I'll switch back to the layers panel. You can see that this region is selected. Trust me that we have a kind of gradient going on right here on the bottom edge. And now I will return to that same command, but I want to reapply flur, a blur gallery that is. So I'll press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and choose that command. And that will revisit my previous settings, including all of those pins. I don't want those anymore. So I'll go ahead and reset them like so. So I'm just removing all the pins and then I'll set another one. Doesn't really matter where in this case, I'll just put it there and I'll change the blur value, let's say to 20 pixels this time around. So I have a little bit of extra blur going on. Now you can see that we do have a depth of field effect, but it's not particularly realistic because it just kind of fades out. Do you notice that the blur becomes less opaque? That doesn't make any sense. What we want it to do, what we want the effect to look like is that the waves are gradually coming into focus as they come toward us. And to make that happen, you want to go up here to this often overlooked option, Selection Bleed. And I'm just going to go ahead and crank it up to 100%. And what that does is it bleeds the blur into the selection, creating a more credible effect as we're seeing right here, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so much for the pixel level stuff. Let's take a brief look at factors. Photoshop CS6 now gives you control over fill and stroke attributes. So that's something new. Here I am looking at a rounded rectangle. It is a vector based shape layer. So I'll go ahead and switch to my black arrow tool, which Photoshop calls the path selection tool, select that guy. I don't want to fill. So I'll just go ahead and set it to none. That is such a miracle compared to Photoshop's of the past. And now I'll change the stroke 
too white. And notice that it's pretty darn thick at this point. Also notice that a line edge is turned on. And this can really kind of drive you bonkers. We'll go ahead and zoom in right there. Notice that we're not aligning to the edge. We have this anti-aliasing right there. I don't want that. So what you have to do, in addition to turning on that checkbox, you have to dial in a pixel-based line weight value. So I'll go with 12 pixels and everything looks great. All right, now I want a dotted outline. And so I'm going to click on this bar right here and then click on more options. And that's going to bring up our dash line settings. And so I'm going to go with the dash value of zero and a gap value of 25 pixels, let's say. Initially, it's not going to look like anything. We're not going to have a dash line at all until I change the caps to round. And that way we have these round dots, at which point I can click OK. If this is the kind of thing you think you'll be using on a regular basis and you want that option to appear in this list, then just click Save. That's all you have to do. Click OK, and now there it is. Isn't that awesome? All right, I don't really want this thing to go right through water drops, the word water drops that is. So I'll use my rectangular marquee tool to draw a selection like so. And then with this layer selected, I'll press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click on the Add Layer Mask icon in order to mask those dots away. So there you have it. One of the strongest updates to Photoshop right before Adobe switched to its subscription model. Now there have been some strong updates since, but CS6 was something special. But hey, what really counts is what you think. So comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications. And what the heck, give me a like. And for a deep dive into that brief moment that was Camera Raw 7 slash Process Version 3, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow and then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.